going on you guys? I hope y'all are having another good day. We're here driving into my Impala SS, uh, going to the gas station to pick up a energy or a monster, uh, just to kind of wake me up and get me, you know, get the juices going and whatnot. So, today I was laying in bed, and actually, let's rewind. First off, I was supposed to go hunting this morning. I was supposed to wake up at 3 a.m., get ready, go out, <clears throat> get in the, in the tree stand by about 5 a.m., that clearly did not happen because I'm making this video right now and it's about, I don't know, 8, 8 o'clock, 8.30. So, I was sitting in bed and I was like, oh, maybe I'll just be lazy today. Not, you know, not, not do anything, you know, just, you know, just chill with a dog today. And I, I was sitting on the couch, or sitting in bed watching YouTube on my TV and then I was like, I watched a couple videos and I was like, I think I'm going to put my turbo on today. So that's what we're going to be doing. Uh, today we are going to be putting that at uh, the Smen and Diesel S464 uh, turbo on the 67 Cummins, my Mega Cab, the third gen y'all y'all are well familiarized with. Um, should be an easy job. We're just swapping the turbo. The manifold is going to stay on there. It's going to have the same downpipe, same exhaust, or same intake. So it should be a fairly straight job now for those of you that are new to the channel or wasn't here on the channel back when I did the original second gen swap uh, I will be able to show a little bit about how I did, how to do it uh, I'm not gonna go super in-depth though because if you really want to learn how to like truly do a second gen swap go back to my video I think it was like last December January go back to my video and uh you can see i i take out a stock oem he 351 turbo manifold intake all that i take all of it out and i put a second gen swap on the uh on the third gen so if you want to see how that goes you can check that video out but i will hit up on a couple of keynotes uh one of the biggest things i'm actually excited looking forward to is uh painting <laughs> the manifold and the uh, termite housing because it is orange and looks ugly uh i'm not going to paint this compressor housing cover yet just because I'm just playing around right now, honestly. Uh, we're gonna see how it goes when I, you know, put the turbo on. Uh, I'm gonna talk more about why I am going from a 467 down to a 464. Uh, a lot of you guys uh, are questioning that and, and you don't understand why. Uh, I'm gonna talk about that in a second once I go inside and grab my monster and come back out, okay? All right, you guys, we are out here in the front of the shop i was gonna say garage <laughs> all right <clears throat> so we out here today we're gonna be swapping out this turbo right here you guys so i i'm gonna be honest with you guys we really i really haven't been in the engine bay a lot since the beginning of this year uh if i can recall the last big job i did underneath the engine was head studs i did arp head studs back in like i want to say february march maybe or april no no not april like January, February time frame, I put uh, ARP 420 head studs on. We did the Smedden uh, S467.7 with a 87 AR, AR is area to ratio, uh, a, uh, 67 millimeter compressor housing, 87 millimeter turbine housing. If you guys didn't know, coming out of the exhaust manifold is your turbine housing. Some people call it exhaust housing uh, or exhaust, yeah, exhaust, exhaust housing. Turbine housing is really the same thing, honestly. Uh, what it is is when I take this off you guys are gonna see there is a turbo compressor on this side and there is also another compressor on this side okay so the way it works is the bigger I'm I'm trying to make sure I say this right the bigger your compressor housing is the more air it's gonna have top to mid end so when I'm rolling at like 45 50 miles an hour and I get in on this on this turbo setup right here she fucking skirts like straight up, like tires don't skirt, but she she gets it. She can get it. I'm talking, you're talking a jump from seven psi up to like thirty psi, probably in less than like two seconds. Uh, low end, it's pretty much a, it's like slightly laggier than a stock turbo. Um, four C sevens can tow. They are towable turbos. Uh, they're not recommended for towing, but usually people who tow a lot will go with the sixty four, sixty three millimeter. Uh, turbo setup which is actually what we're going to be putting on here i don't plan on towing a lot soon but i'm mainly doing this video you guys because i'm just experimenting honestly uh i just want to see what it feels like running a 64 setup uh you can run fuel 
If you run fuel on a 67 setup, it's going to haul ass. If you run it on a 64 setup, it's still going to haul ass. For Smetting Diesel uh, 467 turbos, and this is not even the newest one. They actually redesigned and came out with newer turbos that are higher flowing than this one. But this is still really good. Uh, 467 is going to be good for up to 800 horsepower. Uh... I do have a billet wheel on here, and then the 64s, I believe, are good up to 650, 700 horsepower. Uh, we're nowhere near that goal yet, so I'm not even worried about numbers like that. Uh, we got, the obviously, the coder intake setup that comes with it. Smed and Diesel three-piece uh, uh, second-gen manifold. That I'm going to be trying to paint today because that looks horrendous. Uh, it pretty much got wet from condensation when I was installing it, and it turned orange, and it stayed orange. <laughs> so... We're gonna be trying to put we're gonna be trying to clean this up a little bit, but as you guys can see so far, all I did was I took out my wheel well liner, which is super simple. This gives us immediate access down here to the back side of the turbo because we're gonna have to disconnect the drain line right there that runs down. We also have some sort of oil leak going on in here. Um it's wet down here. I'm thinking that drain line got loose or maybe the uh no, actually, I don't know. We're going to find out when we take it apart, though. But, yeah, we got a little oil leak going on there. We also have one on the top side. The oil inlet line coming from the oil filter housing on the side of the block up here. And it might be kind of hard to see, but it's, uh, it's a little wet. It's a little wet in there, uh, right there. Yeah, you guys can see all that, that moisture. That's, I don't know what that is, residual oil or what, but we're going to try to get all that cleaned up. Uh, first things first. Go ahead and remove your battery. Uh, get your battery out the way. Take your passenger battery off and remove this battery tray. Uh, it's going to make for a hell of a lot easier removal of the turbine housing. Because uh, I don't know if you guys can see, but I'm going to have to be able to get into here to access those bolts right there. There's one on that side, and there's one on that side, and there's two on the bottom side. And I, I believe they're 14 millimeter bolts. Uh, I did put anti seize on them before I installed it, so thank God. Hopefully it's not stuck in... And, and a bitch to get off. I don't think it's gonna be. So we got that. And honestly, man, this is gonna be a quick job, all right? So I'm gonna get you guys set up and we're gonna get to work. All right, you guys. So I wanted to go ahead and show you guys where I'm at so far. I haven't done a whole lot. I apologize for the angle of recording. I know you cannot see a whole lot well, from my camera stand. So my stand is like right here. And I have it sitting on blocks because this you know, truck's higher lifted and whatnot. I apologize, I don't have a camera person yet. Maybe one day my wife, I'll make her my permanent camera person, camera lady. Uh, so, so far all I did was I took off the intake, super easy. Uh, I, did, I loosened up the intercooler. One second, let me get on my ladder. I loosened up my intercooler boots right there, clamps. So I got my boost pipe. Uh, for those of you that didn't know, I do have a aftermarket intercooler. I have a Nishimoto uh, three inch intercooler. The, I do not have the stock intercooler no more. I have a video from last year when I installed it and a review. Uh, so I went ahead, took that off. Uh, this little solenoid uh, thingy in the jigger right here. So if you are doing this for the first time, this right here is going to be located on this side i moved mine from here to the, this side because it it, it it was in the way once you do a second gen swap it's going to be in the way so i went ahead and moved it uh to the side it's just two little uh star head screws i took out now it's hanging because what we're going to be doing now is i'm going to end up taking out the box uh to take out your battery box it's the one two and i think it's yeah these four so one two one two and then there's a fifth one somewhere it might be on the bottom side, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, oh, sorry, six. This one, this one, and I don't think this one has to come out, but one, two, three, four, and then the other two on the inboard side, six. That makes six, okay? I'm gonna take this battery tray out right now. Once I take the tray out, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect my intercooler boost pipe, and then from there, I'm probably gonna disconnect the downpipe flange get that free uh disconnect the inlet the inlet oil line all over here and then disconnect the uh drain line and then honestly from that point dude it's pretty simple all right so thank you guys for sticking it out please give me a thumbs up if you like this up to this portion of the video i really appreciate it and let's get back
right, you guys. So, progress update. So what we did, <clears throat> went ahead, took off the compressor housing cover. Super simple, it's just a band clamp. Loosen the band clamp, housing comes off. Disconnected the oil food feed line right here. It was a simple, I don't remember what size it was. Uh, I think it was a 5 8 if not a 5 8 it was a, a Actually, yeah, this is a 5 8 Sorry, 5 8 Disconnected the oil feed line with 5 8 uh, Now we've come down here. I'm about to show you guys a little. Maybe this will help you all out in the future. If you're doing this, I highly recommend installing the drain line to the fitting first. Okay. You can't, one second. I got all this crap in the way. Okay. So you can't, you can see right there, it's really hard to get a wrench on that. Okay. It's like a, and it's a big wrench too. I think it's like, I think I'm using a one and five sixteenths or one in, yeah, I think it's a one and five sixteenths. Uh, it's really hard to get a wrench in there because of the turbine housing and the compressor housing sandwich. And it's in the middle of both of them. So if you look, you notice that there's Allen keys holding that fitting into the bottom of the turbo. Uh, I'm just going to take the Allen keys and take that fitting out completely. And then once I get the turbo off or once I get that out of there, I will just, uh, take it off I'll unscrew it from there I, I, I loosened it I was able to break torque on it but using a wrench to turn that motherfucker off all the way that would be you I would be wrenching for probably about 10 minutes because my wrist would cramp up or my forearm so we're just gonna take it off from the housing itself once we take that drain line off I already disconnected the back back exhaust uh, we just got to take those four bolts off holding or actually I'll take the turbine housing off so once I do that, I'm gonna, just, I'm gonna take the turbine housing off. Once the turbine housing comes out, it's just gonna be a hollow housing. And then we're just gonna take it off the manifold and then go from there, man, okay? All right, you guys, so we're back here. So you guys, turbine housing is the only thing on here. I went ahead and did exactly what I told you guys. I took off the, uh, I took the little Allen screws out and I'm actually gonna leave that on there, but what I will do before I put the new, put it back on is I'm going to make sure that it is on nice and tight, so that way it does not come, or it does not start leaking oil. I believe there is a gasket on the bottom of the, on the bottom of the turbo, the, tur the, the turbine housing, uh, not turbine housing, on the bottom of the turbo, there's a, where it connects to, there's a gasket there. I'm gonna make sure that gasket's on there and it's good. Uh, right now, you can see, I went ahead and soaked it with some PB Blaster. It's been soaking for about, eh, say about five minutes, just to kind of help it out, ease it, ease it out in, out of there. Uh, shouldn't have any issues. Uh, you guys, the way I took this turbo out, the way I took this turbo out, man, this is the easiest way you're gonna take out a second gen turbo. If you try to just unbolt it from here with everything attached, one, it's heavy as hell. Two, you're probably not gonna be able to do it because you're not gonna be able to get a good angle on a wrench unless you strip the hell out of the bolts. Take off the compressor housing first, disconnect the band clamp for the downpipe, take out the actual turbine housing itself, turbine compressor housing unit itself, take it out, and that leaves you with just this housing for the turbine on it. It's super light and easy to take out, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and take this off, and then we're gonna go in the garage, and I have everything laid out nice and neat, all professional looking-ish. <laughs> Gotta throw that ish in there. Uh, we got old side here, we got new side here. I'm gonna break this down. I'm gonna take this apart the same way I took this apart. But before we put this on, I'm going to spray the turbine housing and I'm gonna spray paint the exhaust manifold on the truck. Um, I got some leftover high temp silicone coating spray. I've heard it does, it, it'll go orange even after spraying it with this stuff. But you know what? We're gonna try and see if it works because you never know, man. Uh, just wing it and we'll hope for the best, okay? So let me go ahead and take this off and then we'll get this in the garage, get you guys set up and then we'll go ahead and uh, we'll, we'll do some talking. Hey you guys, I just wanna show you something real quick. So if you guys ever wanted to paint your turbine housing like I'm doing, uh, first of all, this is what I'm using. High temp silicone coating, seals and protects exhaust wraps, great for engine blocks, exhaust pipes, etc. So it's good up to 1500 degrees, we'll find out. All right, so if you wanted to do a quick way to prep it without taping and stuff, get you some aluminum foil, uh, just basic aluminum foil. And what's awesome about it is it wraps to any surface you want. So let's say you have an awkward object you're trying to mask up, aluminum foil it. And it can mold, you can mold it to whatever you want. Uh, obviously this isn't perfect because I don't need it to be perfect. I just want the main housing section of it to be, uh, you know, to be, be nice. So. Just wanted to show y'all show that real quick. I'm gonna go ahead and get this painted up. All right, you guys, so 
This is done. I just put a third coat on. The third coat was a heavy coat. First two coats were light coats. Third coat's drying right now. Third coat's drying right now. Uh, also did the exhaust manifold. Exhaust manifold don't look that good, but you know, it looks better than it did before. I put same thing, two, uh, two, two light coats and then a heavy coat. We'll see how it holds up. Uh, you know, I'm not expecting it to look immaculate. Uh, I can tell you right now, this looks a lot better than what it did when it was orange, but we'll see. We shall see, okay? So while that is drying, I'm just gonna be waiting. Uh, I have everything I need. I, all the hardware is reusable minus the turbine housing gasket, which I have a new one. Um, honestly, you guys, installation is the same as reverse or as removal, except reversed. Um, yeah, that's, that's really it though. I can't wait to put this on though. All right, so let's go. Oh, we also got an oil change scheduled too. So this right here is oil change time. Oh wow, that wasn't that was not the box. <laughs> it's this one. Uh, but we we are going to be doing an oil change. Uh, what better way to break in a new turbo than giving it some new oil? So you guys know me, AMS oil all day, every day. We're going to be running some of that 5W30 just in time for winter. Uh, so she has that nice thin oil. I also see the best fuel economy. So if you guys don't know, I was running this oil currently. This is the AMS oil, uh, what is it, premium heavy duty diesel marine uh, oil, 15W40, which is actually the recommended spec for a 6.7 Cummins. I'm running 5W30 just because I like that thinner oil. Uh, this is this is their entry level oil. Why am I running this? Because you this is normal intervals. So I would change this oil at 7,500 miles. Oil like this, a little bit more money, but you get twice the intervals. So I would go 14, what, 15,000 miles. I have to do some math. Go 15,000 miles running that. So we're also gonna be changing oil once everything is installed. I'm gonna let her idle and then I'll jack up the back of the truck to help level, level it out. So when I drain the oil, we get all the old junk out. And then uh, we rocking and rolling, man. All right, you guys, so we have been making progress yes we have okay first off first off this looks phenomenal um the black i wish i would have did this the first time that way i could have got it all covered up nice and clean uh this looks really good right now so real quick let's get y'all sped up went ahead i mounted the turbine housing bolted that in made sure it's nice and snug went back to the exhaust uh, downpipe now biggest key is to ensure you have a even seal around your exhaust pipe okay because what happens is if the maiden surfaces between the turbo housing the turbine housing and the exhaust flange are not sealed properly you're gonna have an exhaust leak right at the back of the turbo so you're gonna have a bunch of soot in here and you're probably gonna have your EGTs might be thrown off a little bit slash you might have bad uh your spooling is probably not gonna be as efficient. So an easy way to tell is if you're looking in here between that seam right there, you want both of them flush with each other and you want them flat against each other. It's real hard to tell once you put the clamp on. So what I recommend doing is kind of playing with the, the uh, downpipe against the back side of the turbo to see how the turbo arm looks when it's flush against it. That way when you go to put the clamp on, you can tell that like, okay, this is roughly how it should be and then from there you can fine tune it. I always like to make sure those two mating surfaces back there are nice and flush and leveled with each other. We come off, I tighten the drain line to the fitting before installing the fitting. It's way easier, trust me you guys, it is way easier to install that fitting to the turbo with the two Allen screw heads versus trying to tighten that drain line right there. Trust me, it's, it's it took me probably like two minutes to install the drain line. How do you know that everything is aligned properly? Oh, one more, th I'll, I'll hit it right now. How do you know everything is installed? How do you know your turbine housing is installed correctly into your turbine, your, uh, your exhaust housing? How do you know all everything is in? Easy way to tell, spin your turbo, spin the wheel. If you spin the wheel and everything is quiet, smooth, you hear no grinding, no nothing, that means everything's lined up correctly. You should have no issues upon startup. If you turn the wheel and you hear some sort of scraping, sounds like a little gritty is catching, 
you need to stop, take everything apart, and examine where you went wrong. Because at this point now, all we have to do is put the compressor housing on, hook up the intercooler pipe and the oil feed line, and this turbo is actually done. Easy, I know the wind is bad right now. This is a super easy job. Uh, hopefully you guys have been sticking out and enjoying this. If you liked it, if you're liking the videos up to this point, please give me that thumbs up because I really appreciate it. Thank you guys. Check this out. Uh, this is what I'm talking about. We got the turbo installed. It looks beautiful. Uh, camera's on less than 20%, so not gonna do a whole lot of talking right now but pretty much this is it man she's all installed tucked in there she looks pretty as hell um painting it definitely changed the engine bay um i love it man now right now i'm about to jack up the truck on the back side because i want to level out the truck before i drain the oil it has a little rake to the back so i'm gonna jack up the back side of it probably won't make a difference but who cares jack it up a little bit that way it's somewhat leveled and then we're gonna go ahead and uh, actually i probably can raise the bags up yeah, I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to go ahead. We're going to drain this oil and uh, change the oil, fire up for the first time, let you guys hear, see, and we'll get a quick driving experience in on this. <laughs> Forget I had to put back together old 467. Man, I tell you what, she looks like she looks like she's seen some shit, but man, she's brand new, man. Doesn't even have 5,000. She barely got 5,000 miles on her, and this thing is awesome. I, I wish I could do something with this turbo, like I don't know, throw it in there somewhere. But gonna have to wrap her up and just keep her until uh, whenever. I don't know. So, oh, one more thing. I told you guys that it was an 87 housing for the 464. It is an 83. I apologize. 83, my boy Mac, he went ahead and uh, gave me the beats on that. I thought I was mistaken. I thought it was an 87. So the backside is an 83, okay? So let's get ready. Let's test drive this, man. I'm done. Guys, so we're inside of the truck now. We're about to go on our first test drive with the 464 turbo installed. I cannot wait. Uh, I'm done talking. I'm about to wind the windows down. And we about to get this on the road, all right? I got my M NBC diesel hat on. I'm already been wearing the shirt because that's what I had on while working on it. I'm about to flip this backwards. I'm, call me Ash Catchem off Pokemon. I'm about to go catch me one, okay? So turn that AC off real quick. Let's do this, baby. Let's see what we are working with. Spoolability. Are we gonna have the quicker spool up? Are we, is it gonna be the same? Or what are we going to notice? You know what I'm saying? So curious sounds beautiful right now all right all right oh boy but this is Chevy working okay throttle response is, is about the same right now we still got the same throttle response okay This is live, you guys. No editing. I'm not gonna cut the film in and out. I just want you guys to see how it is when uh, when we do it. Okay. Hopefully, we notice a quicker spool up. All right. Let's get it. Okay, yeah. 
it hits it hits it quicker, a little bit quicker. It's not night it's not ridiculously like it's not like running twins for spoolability. But you do notice it even my boost gauge it goes up like when I'm rope when I'm cruising right now at 45, when I tap into it, it goes up quicker now. Before shit, it, 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 Oh yeah, that's good. Find a nice road for this uh, to finish this video down in Mexico, if you know what I'm saying. This is fucking awesome. I'm sorry for cursing you guys, but this is so cool. Oh my God, now I just wanna like go to like a, a straight strip right now. All right, we're pulling up here. I'm about to go make my return. This is freaking awesome. Oh my goodness, you guys. Let me come to this side, man. You guys gotta see this, man. This is not no made up stuff. It, it looks freaking clean. Like there's no dirt on it, there's, no, there's nothing. All of the dirt that was on it is gone. You guys remember when I wiped my hand here? All of it, it, just, fell, it just fell off. The only spot there's still stuff it's like right here, there's like bug marks. That, look at that, I can push it with my finger. It's, so I, if I wanted to, I can go home, wipe it down with a, with a detail spray, and it will be clean. Check that out, man. The water doesn't even want to sit on the truck. Look how the beads just sit balled up. I bet by the time I get home, this truck's gonna be like dried off. Wow, that is freaking awesome. I, got, I even left the steps down so I can rinse them off, but I can, I can go up now. Oh man, that's awesome. Dude, you guys, ceramic coat, man, I'm telling you. Do ceramic coat, I mean, half the truck's dry. Ceramic coat your freaking truck if you care about your paint. You guys, I mean, this is, all I did was rinse it off. No soap, because the soap here at these car washes is super acidic. Or not acidic, but it's super, uh, the pH level is very high, so because it's made to strip any grease and dirt film and all that stuff on there. Uh, it's definitely, definitely worth it. Oh my goodness. Wow, this is the first time I've rinsed my truck since the ceramic coating it. It hasn't rained, it drizzled like one day, but barely got wet. This is, this is baller right here. Wow, all of this, man. Freaking impressed. All right, you guys. So, we're gonna go ahead and this video out now. Thank you guys so much for checking out the channel once again. Hit up MDC Diesel for any turbo needs. Hit up my man Adrian for any oil needs, and that includes oil for brake fluid, uh, engine, any, anything of fluid, AMS oil mix, I guarantee you. Uh, power steering fluid, brake fluid, uh, engine oil, transmission oil, gear oil, anything. Hit, hit, hit them up, man, you're gonna get a good deal. Uh, I, I'm, I'm blown between the turbo and the ceramic coating. So thank you guys so much for checking out the channel. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit that smash, thumb that, smash, <laughs> smash the thumb button, likes up, thank you. Uh, let me know what you think about the video. Let me know what you think about the turbo. Let me know what you think about the ceramic coating. Uh, spraying it after a week of not washing it and it looks brand new again. Uh, let me know, I really wanna know, okay? So until next time, you guys take it easy, be safe, and peace out.